Hi guys, Johnny here with Johnny Watson Gaming and today we've got another Johnny Experiments. We're painting a miniature with only oil paints. Catch you in a bit. Hi guys, so here we go. Um, this is probably the uh, biggest challenge I've ever taken up on uh, in terms of painting. I've never painted a, an entire miniature uh, with oil paints. So with that then, I had to work out how I was going to ta take on this project. How was I, how was I going to paint this miniature? Uh, so I did a lot of research, uh, trying to work out, for me, my best methods. So a lot of video watching, um, watching some of the, 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 uh, the, those guys out there who, who do paint a lot with oils. People like James Wappel, uh, uh, Vince Ventuela as well, and, and a number of others. Um, and in the end, I decided that the best thing, approach for me is to almost approach it like I am painting with acrylics to start with. So what I mean by that is, at first, first and foremost, I'm just getting down some bases uh, for each element of the model. So for, for example, at the moment, I'm putting down a purple base for the, the, all the cloak, hats, uh, or, or cloth areas. Then I'd move on to the, the, the staff, put, get that down as a brown, and so on. Uh, that, that way, I can then manipulate the oils from that position. Uh, and that's, that was my thinking anyway to, to start off. So as I carry out this initial step, uh, I'm, I'm working in the knowledge that the oil paints will be wet uh, for the, the entire uh, time I'll be painting this miniature. So, and, and, and it's this that makes the um, painting with oils very, very, very different to acrylics and the way you approach it. Uh, so obviously at the moment I'm just putting base coats down and, it, and you would say not much change there. It's not until you start adding more to the miniature that things really do change. So one thing I did with this experiment was that I mixed all my colours and that's something that uh, oil paints really do well. Uh, so here, for example, you can see me, I'm, I'm mixing up some um, sort of dwarfy flesh tone to go on to the face. Uh, and this is something I would never normally do in acrylics at all. Uh, I've, I've got hundreds of flesh tone bottles of acrylics, you know, why bother? Uh, but it's, it's, this is a, a lovely little exp, uh, experience for me, something I'd, I've never really tried. So it was, it was a good opportunity to um, give mixing all different array of colors uh, a go and sk skin tones alike um, so yeah very 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 interesting and like i say oils are, are perfect for this experiment because um, they really mix really well as a side note uh, the paints that i'm using are pre-thinned down so i pre-thinned them in dropper bottles uh, if you're interested, there's a video on how I did that in my last Johnny Experiments video, and I'll just put a little link at the top corner of this video. Okay, with all my inverted commas base coats done, it's time to start blending, and this is where things change dramatically as to how you work with oils opposed to acrylics. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting my colour, I'm putting it in the location that I want to be either highlighted or shadowed. I place it in that position and then I take another brush, a brush that's not been in any thinners or spirits or anything like that, it's generally quite dry, soft brush, and then I um, smooth it out with that brush or buff it out as such or, or blend it in. Um, 
So hopefully you can see that in the video uh, as we go through. Uh, and it's a case of doing this backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards uh, with many different colors uh, and many different shades. So here's probably one of the best examples of this particular technique. So I'm just uh, mixing up a lighter purple or a purple I feel uh, would be nice as a, a bit more of a highlighted color. I take that color and I'm placing that now in all the high, rays, uh, high areas on the cloak or, and hat and any clothing areas. Once I've done that, I then come back with a clean brush uh, and a soft brush and then I blend it in and hopefully you'll, again you'll see that in a sec once I get the, the, dry, the, the dry brush out. Now I'm coming in with a soft dry brush to blend in those edges that I uh, placed onto the miniature. And it's here you realize why people use oils uh, to paint miniatures. The blends are extremely creamy and you don't get horrible marks or stains. Uh, they just blend straight into each other and it's absolutely lovely. What you find that happens quite often though is the mid tone becomes the strongest tone so you've got to watch that so that's where you've got to keep putting in uh, higher highlights and then you blend it in it brings in the mid tone and then you just keep going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards um, but it you, you could start to understand uh, why some top painters do use oils uh, to do their top quality miniatures um, and, and it was absolute joy to do. Uh, and it was at this point where the miniature became fun. It, it became fun to take, to take on this little experiment uh, and definitely something, it, it, it was at this point where I felt like, oh, I've, I've got to keep doing this. I've got to keep trying this. Um, so I, I would recommend to anyone who's looking to improve their painting skills in general um, or just to look at for different ways to make painting fun or interesting try oils um, it's definitely it definitely has, has grabbed me in that sense so on the base I put this uh, green um, effect uh, it could be sort of moss or anything it was just a something I just thought I'd, I'd put onto the base uh, and here's an example of just something a bit more fun uh, where I'm showing some light being reflected off of the base into the miniature uh, and I'm just placing some green highlights into the purple um, and then blending it in. Uh, and, it, and something like that on a, with using acrylics would take hours of glazing and glazing and glazing. Um, whereas here it's literally taken me less than five minutes to do. Um, so it's just another good example of what you can achieve using oils um, over an acrylic. Uh, in, in situations like this. And a bit more of the same process here, just um, on the beard now, just going around, putting some uh, bit, bit of color or bit of white into the beard and then blending that through.
Okay, so disaster struck and I managed to spill a load of paint onto the miniature's face. Um, and I had to take a Q-tip to it and clear the face completely uh, and start again, which really <laughs> uh, upset me because I thought it was looking pretty nice at the time. Um, but these things happen. But I think this really just shows the versatility of the oil paints. Uh, what I was able to do was remove that, that section um, of paint and then just go back in and build it back up again as I had done at, throughout the video. Um, and I didn't have to strip the model entirely or I didn't have to repaint the model. I just, had, I just took away what I needed to take away uh, and start again. Uh, and I think it just gives another benefit as to why using oils is very, it's a very fluid um, action, very fluid motion. You know, you're sort of living and breathing it all the way through. And it's kind of, I think that sort of helps to, it really does emphasize what, what you can do with oils. As it happens, I think um, by the end of it, I actually painted the face slightly better the second time round. Um, so I guess there was, uh, all, although uh, distressing at the time, um, maybe it was worth it. <laughs> Okay, so I left the model over uh, a few days, about two, two maybe three days, um, and I've come back to it now, and what I'm doing here is just spraying it with a gloss varnish uh, through the airbrush. Uh, this is to seal in the oil paints that are dried, and also to give me a good uh, surface tension area to uh, put down a oil wash which is next or a pin wash is what I'm going to be doing here so I'm just going to go into the little nooks and crannies uh, where I feel that there's going to I, I need some uh, dark shade um, just to help make the, the model pop uh, so another great thing about uh, oil paints is there ability to pin wash like this um, because they are not water the surface tension of the oil is uh, much less and seeps straight into those nooks and crannies uh, really easy so I'm just dabbing the brush uh, where I want it and it, and it and the model almost seeps up the, uh, the oil just where you want it so yeah another great application for it So once the pin wash is finished, I just want to go over the model um, with a Q-tip to um, just clean up any areas that maybe a bit of uh, oil wash got, got onto, just to remove it, just to, to make it a little bit cleaner. And uh, then the process is pretty much done.
There you go guys, experiment completed. Uh, a model painted only with oil paints. What do you think? Is it something that you would try? Um, I know for myself, it's been a brilliant challenge. Uh, it's really pushed my boundaries as to what I know uh, from uh, painting and you know my my, uh, my skills. It's really pushed me pushed pushed them to the to the edge, let's say. Um, but to do to get better, that's the way you need to do. You need to try new things. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe.